Hello, everyone. Um, so my name is Ulf. Uh, I work for Achilles. And um, clearly, I have too much spare time. Um, um, my background is uh, primarily in uh, backend systems. And uh, I uh, spent, I don't know, uh, 14 years in industry, um, mostly doing that. but. Uh, I did a short turn doing uh, embedded C for a very short while, and I stopped liking embedded systems. Um, but then got the opportunity three or four years ago to uh, do Rust embedded full time again, and uh, I kind of refound my uh, my love for it. Uh, so yeah, uh, pretty um, grateful uh, for the existence of, of Rust. Yeah. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is, however, not work-related. Um, I've been poisoning my uh, my arm or a wrist uh, with rust, and I'm probably not the first one to do this or the last one. But um, with this talk, I kind of hope to uh, inspire people to. Uh, have fun, uh, play with uh, play with new things, and uh, see where it goes. So I um, <clears throat> so I uh, made an open source project for running uh, REST with Embassy uh, and firmware updates and so on uh, on my uh, my smartwatch. And um, <coughs> sorry, um, this. Uh, project is called Watchful, because I like anagrams using my own name and so on. Um, but let's talk a bit about the hardware first. So the watch I'm using is uh, Pine Time. It has uh, one of those small or medium-sized MCUs uh, that Dario mentioned earlier. Um, it has a Bluetooth uh, radio. It has a touch display and a touch sensor, from a heart rate sensor and some extra storage. So um, that's not 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 great specs for a smartwatch, but the big upside of this hardware is that it's uh, hackable, or uh, you can play with it. You can use uh, you can buy a development kit from their store, and you can use a standard debug probe to program it. Uh, which, you know, it's it's a lot of fun. Obviously, you can't wear this one. Uh, so to to actually run Rust on uh, this one, I which is sealed, uh, there's some additional tricks involved, which we'll see. Which we'll see. Comes with some software, some C-based software. Uh, and as, as I said earlier, uh, my experience with embedded C isn't that great. Um, and I kind of, coming back to Rust Embedded, I, um, I kind of realized that uh, there's a lot of talk about the needing an RTOS in C. Uh, and I think the, one of the reasons for that is that um, you need libraries. You don't want to have to write drivers for everything. You need uh, a dependency manager and so on. And in the C world, this is largely part of the RTOS you're using, but for Rust, it's done the right way. And that's, I, I really mean that because uh, developing an embedded Rust application is very similar to just developing a regular application, but there's just some stuff you can't use in the language, and that's, that's fine. But the, the, like the tooling and everything is just amazing. So, what do I want for my uh, smartwatch firmware? I uh, need to display the the time. Of course, uh, you kind of forget that the purpose of a watch is to keep track of time these days. Uh, but I also lose my phone all the time and really like to find it again. Uh, I want to uh, display my heart rate in case I'm working out, you know, bragging a bit there. Um, and um, basically, if you used an Apple Watch and, and uh, any other Garmin or Polar, they have a lot of features, but 
I don't really need all of that. <laughs> so uh, the hope is to have a decent battery um, usage. And also, since I don't want to, you know, crack it open and put the debug probe on and flash it and then glue it back together every time I want to program it, I need to have firmware updates uh, over Bluetooth. But first, um, it's important to start with the, uh, let's say, uh, something that you can see, uh, something that you, you can brag about to your friends, uh, and that's the visuals. Um, so it's really been really interesting to hear about all of these UI toolkits uh, at the conference. Um, in my case, I've been uh, using something called embedded graphics. It's a really, really stripped down uh, crate that allows you to do basic 2D graphics. Um, it integrates a lot with this uh, embedded ecosystem traits for uh, uh, using the SPI to draw um, graphics. And you have already, actually you have drivers in the uh, crates.io for display and the touch sensor already. This is another example of how Rust has done this right, because I can just depend on a crate, on crates.io, pull it in and use it, reuse it, reusable, composable. It's just great. Um, there's also a simulator, so we can actually test the uh, the the UI on your um, on your uh, uh, PC before you actually deploy it to your uh, to your uh, watch. And this is basically how my this is the limit of my design skills. Like this, this is how pretty I can uh, make things. Um, the next step I went to was um, to start on the connectivity to be able to. Uh, send firmware updates and synchronize the time on the on the on, on the watch itself. And I really wanted to do this early because I was a bit familiar with it, but I also wanted it to work really well and reliably. Uh, so it got a lot of testing during the development process. And this uh, using Bluetooth in Rust is pretty uh, pretty great. Um, so Dario made uh, a lot of effort there with the uh, NRF support, with the embassy, uh, but also the, um, the integration with the Bluetooth stack that you find on, uh, on the, from, from the vendor. Uh, so, but for, uh, for, to meet my requirements, I wanted to have firmware updates. Uh, so I implemented uh, Nordic's firmware update service so that I could uh, reuse my phone to uh, update the software. So that's, you know, Made it in Rust, published a crate. Others can reuse it. More, more composability. All right. Um, to synchronize time, you actually have a standard Bluetooth service for that that the phone supports. So you can actually implement a client on the watch that talks to the phone and asks it what's the what's the current time. So, yeah. Uh, last step: storage. Um, to the, it has external flash. And to use that, uh, it's really easy. We can use embedded HAL to to talk to any like SPI peripheral, and then you can expose an API using the embedded storage trait. And that's really not a lot of code. You just implement these two interfaces, and then you have a generic reusable driver. Firmware updates. Um, Embassy has a bootloader that supports. A B switching between the firmware, so I can have the, the the one that's currently running, and I can have the one that's going to be updated in a separate uh, partition, which the bootloader can be instructed to swap. So it's, it's a really simple piece of software, but it's pretty critical. So the great switcheroo. Uh, how do I get like convert from the existing software to the to the Rust-based one? Because Basically, you need to go from this layout in the flash storage to that one. And that's wildly different. You need to kind of rewrite your uh, entire uh, uh, program. And this is the solution. <laughs> um, basically, you, uh, I wrote a, a reloader app, which contains the new Bluetooth stack, the new bootloader, the new application, writes the uh, Bluetooth stack, 
to to the flash writes the uh, bootloader to flash writes the application to the external flash and finally it ins instructs the bootloader to to uh, you know swap your uh, uh, new application in and uh, how many so show of hands how many think that it's worked on the first try <laughs> uh, come on come on <laughs> because it did Plus, 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 plus. And actually, and actually, uh, you know, uh, a lot of credits goes to everyone who is, you know, working in the Rust ecosystem, creating these crates. That uh, I believe that a lot of the reason why this was, I was uh, maybe I was just lucky, but like uh, a lot of people wrote software that's using Rust, but because of that, is also. It ca catches a lot of these edge cases. Edge ca edge cases. Um, but I did have one bug. And then I didn't actually discover it until two weeks later when I did a firmware update that uh, was failing and it rolled back. And I, d I found a bug in the rollback process. <laughs> so yeah. Um, but so I had to crack it open. <laughs> Uh, and so on. But the good news is that the, this smartwatch costs, I don't know, at the time it was like 30 euros or something. So that's kind of cheaper than a lot of other smartwatches. So I got a new one <laughs> after fixing the bug, of course. So what can um, what can uh, I say about uh, this? Like uh, getting the display working, getting the storage working, the connectivity and stuff like that. that that's kind of a solved problem. Um, the only real uh, time I had to spend uh, that was critical was this testing upgrade and downgrade path. Um, but it uh, kind of doing this kind of project renews your appreciation of Crates.io and uh, and the Rust ecosystem because you have so much great software uh, out there. And also, you know, um, it, it just just it wor the tool set of building with Cargo is great, but also FOBRS, which, uh, like, if you compare it to what was there five, ten years ago, it's just so super easy to use. And uh, just like uh, you're just running this application on your microcontroller, but it feels like you're just debugging a regular program on your uh, on your computer. I have a wish list <laughs> for Rust. Um, like, there's a few new ones, a few annoying things, like, if you have a embedded uh, project, you usually have some parts that are common that you want to unit test in the STD environment, but then you have your uh, other thing that's specific to uh, a particular target, and it's it's a bit feels a, it could be more native uh, a more native feel to it. Um, also, uh, there's a very big desire to put a lot of project in the same repo because it's easier to maintain that way. I wish there was, I don't have a solution, I'm just complaining. <laughs> but uh, like if there was a way to, um, I don't know, like uh, keep dependencies in sync across uh, Git repositories more easily. Uh, and also uh, when making new REST features, uh, take embedded into account because that's, it's like a complete game changer in my mind. Uh, on how uh, embedded development is done, and I'm 100% search so certain <laughs> that uh, a lot of companies will be looking at that uh, in the future. So uh, check out uh, my uh, real-time operating system called <laughs> Watchful, or uh, just a collection of uh, uh, libraries, really. And then there's the Embassy Project, ProBaris, Embedded Rust has done a fantastic job on defining the APIs that you can use to re, uh, create reusable code. If you're interested in Bluetooth, talk to me. Uh, we're doing some uh, interesting work there on uh, creating a REST native Bluetooth host. And that's my talk. Here. Okay. All right, thanks, Ulf. Um, are there any questions? There you go. Hi, so I was wondering, I'm assuming the watch charges to USB. 
can't you just do the firmware update and debugging over USB, or does the chip not support that? Oh, well, I think doesn't think I don't think this one has USB peripheral actually. Um, the NRF it's it's one of the more stripped down NRF fifty twos, but uh, also there's no USB connector uh, on it. Thanks for the nice talk. You said at the beginning one of your goals was to have a week of uh, uptime and some other things. Did you reach all of your goals? Oh, good question. Uh, nope, it's uh, not nearly done. Um, you know, you, you think it's going to be a quick thing. <laughs> yeah. And it ends up like a multi-year thing. But, uh, well, uh, I think the battery can last maybe two days at the moment. But I haven't. That's without doing any kind of uh, power profiling or, and stuff like that. So... Uh, that's better than my uh, than an Apple Watch, <laughs> so uh, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, where's more questions over there? So I was wondering about the NRF uh, soft device integration. Whether you had any challenges with that? So, uh, for instance, the talk operating system is looking into using the NRF soft device, but. Apparently, it makes some assumptions about uh, other parts of the software stack on those chips. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so, as you saw, and um, I had to go this <laughs> a bit briefly through it, but the, it, the the software is very particular about where it can be placed in RAM. The good or sort of good news is that um, Nordic has uh, a new soft device, if you will, that is implements just the controller part in Bluetooth that you can embed as a library in your application. Uh, the problem is that now you have to write your own uh, Bluetooth host. And this is the reason why I mentioned this Trouble uh, project, which uh, we're uh, working on at Achilles to to use um, in our products, because uh, we, we've also felt the pain of that, uh, right? So, uh, so please, if you're interested in uh, that, uh, let's talk later. Huh? All right. Any other questions? I'm looking for hands. Here's one more hand. Have you looked into what it takes to root any higher spec watches? Like, what's 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 the fanciest watch that you that you could probably get this stuff into? Uh, I don't have a good overview of what's out there. I I found one that's has in the same category of uh, hackable <laughs> that has a GPS. Um, and that's if it ever were one thing I was missing from the hardware, it would be a GPS. Uh, so I, c I don't remember exactly the name of that, but uh, yeah, uh, need to Google it. All right. Do we have time for more questions? Look at timekeepers. One more over there. Thank you. Uh, would it be possible to use the existing bootloader on the watch? In some uh, way? The existing bootloader that was on the watch? Yeah. Um, ideally, that would be great. Like it just has an MCU boot bootloader that um, that could have worked if it hadn't been for the soft device that actually has to be placed uh, there. <laughs> uh, but with the new stack, well, I could have potentially, like with a trouble and a new soft device, which can be embedded as a library. I could have potentially reused it. So if I started the project now, now, uh, well, well, it's 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 a nice, it goes for a nice talk. So uh, I don't regret it. <laughs> All right, and with that, uh, please give it up for Ulf.